I have discussed about the foundational axioms of fluid dynamics, namely the conservation laws, particularly conservation of masses, conservation of linear momentum and conservation of energies. These are based on classical mechanics. However, these things can be incorporated into quantum mechanics as well as general theory of relativity also. In addition to the above, we have also discussed about the quantum assumption, continuum assumptions of the fluid mechanics, where we assumed that fluid, uh, uh, fluids are assumed to obey the continuum assumptions, where we assumed that fluids are composed of molecules that collide with one another and solid objects. However, the continuum assumptions considers fluids to be continuous rather than discrete. Consequently, properties such as density, pressure, temperature and velocity are taken to be well defined at infinitesimally small points known as fluid element and are assumed to vary continuously from one point to another. The fact that the fluid is made up of discrete molecules have been ignored. Second point we discussed uh, that <coughs> the mechanics part that means for fluids which are sufficiently dense to be continuum and have velocity small compared to the speed of light. In that case, the momentum equations for Newtonian fluids are the Navier-Stokes theorem and which is nonlinear set of differential equations that describes the flow of a fluid whose stress depends linearly on velocity gradient and pressure that we have already discussed. Second point we have discussed, uh, we told a little bit that the um, those who are complicated problem that means the unsimplified equations do not have a general uh, in gen, uh, do not have a general closed form solution. So, in that case uh, they are primarily uh, uh, handled in computational fluid dynamics. In addition to that we have also discussed the different terminologies in the fluid mechanics namely compressible versus incompressible fluid, viscous versus non-viscous fluid, what is the meaning of viscous, what is the meaning of non-viscous fluid etcetera, Newtonian fluid, non-Newtonian fluid, these are the things we have discussed till now. Now, we are going to start uh, the a little bit more mathematical, the continuity equation in fluid mechanics. Okay. Let me start it. Before uh, going to fluid mechanics, what does it mean by continuity equation? A continuity equation in physics is a differential equation that describe the transport of some kind of conserved quantity. And so, since example, since mass, energy, momentum, electric charge and other natural quantities are conserved, a vast variety of physics may be described with um, continuity equations. So, continuity equations are local form of conservation laws, all the examples of continuity equation express the same idea which states that the total amount of the conserved quantity inside any region can only change by the amount that passes in or out of the region through the boundary. A conserved quantity cannot increase or decrease, it can only move from one place to another. Any continuity equation can be expressed in terms of integral in form, closed form in terms of a flux integral, which applies to any finite region or in a differential form in terms of divergence operator, which applies at a point. That means, we have to use the uh, um, uh, divergence theorem means if you take any closed surface of any vector that means, a uh, dot d s closed surface integral which can be converted to a differential form through the divergence theorem which is nothing but the closed surface integral is related to the volume integral using the divergence theorem. So, that means, any continuity equation can either uh, be expressed in terms of closed integral form or in terms of the in a different cell form using the divergence operator. So, the general form for a continuity equation 
uh, for any uh, depending for any physical problem is del phi by del t plus divergence of f equal to s, where phi is some quantity, where phi is some quantity f is a vector function depending on the flux of phi and del is a del operator. For an example, in current continuity equation, this is del rho by del t plus divergence of E equal to 0. In that case, there is uh, if you will demand the conservation of uh, electric charge. So, no electric charge can be created or annihilated. In that case, it will be that. So, and S is a function describing the generation and removal of phi terms that generate S greater than 0 or remove S less than 0 are referred to as the source, stress and sink respectively. In the case that is a conserved quantity that cannot be created or destroyed such as energy, in that case above continuity equation will be reduces to s equal to 0 that means, d phi del phi by del t plus divergence of f equal to 0, since there is no source or sink term. These general equation may be used to derive any continuity equation ranging from a from as simple as the volume continuity equation to as complicated as the Navier Stokes equation that we have already discussed, which is another form of continuity equation. Okay. Now, let me uh, dis, uh, discuss uh, the continuity equation in the fluid dynamics. In fluid dynamics, the continuity equation is a mathematical statement that in any steady state process, the rate at which mass enters a system is equal to the rate at which mass leaves the system. So, the continuity equation is analogous to Kirchhoff's current law in electric circuit. The differential form of continuity equation in fluid dynamics is as follows. Del rho upon del t plus uh, divergence of rho u equal to 0. The left hand side is nothing but the total time derivative of rho d rho by d t equal to del rho upon del t plus divergence of rho u equal to 0. Since, there is no source or sig where rho is the fluid density and u is the fluid velocity vector. If the density is a constant as in the case of incompressible flow, the mass continuity equation simplifies to a volume continuity equation, where we can take outside rho uh, divergence of rho u equal to divergence uh, uh, grad rho u plus u divergence of you since rho does not depend uh, rho does not change in that case grad rho will be the zero so in that case divergence of u equal to zero so the this divergence of velocity field is zero everywhere this is equivalent to saying that the local volume dilation rate is zero so the equation of continuity is a fundamental equation of flow and is a special case of general physical law of conservation of matter. For an incompressible fluid that means, it is a liquid, it may be deduced as follows. Uh, let, uh, let us take some figure 4. So, imagine the fluid to be flowing through a pipe A B, where A 1 and A 2 small a 1 and small a 2 as uh, denotes its area of cross section at the section A and B respectively just see this figure. Let us consider an infinite similar small tube of flow, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is shown dotted in the figure of cross sectional area d a 1 and d a 2 at its two ends and with velocities of the fluid v 1 and v 2 at the sections a and b respectively. Then the fluid covers a distance d s 1 and d s 2 in time d t at the two ends and rho 1 and rho 2 are the densities of the fluid at A and B respectively. In that case, the mass of the fluid entering flow tube at end A per unit time is d A 1 which is the infinitesimal area times d S 1 
the distance traverse in infinitesimal time d t into rho 1 divided by d t, because d a 1 d s 1 will give you the volume multi is multiplied by density will give you the mass which is in d t time. So, that is the uh, that is the reason mass of fluid entering flow tube at the end per unit time. So, which is nothing but the d a 1 if d s 1 by d t you can write v 1. So, d a 1 into v 1 into rho 1. Similarly, you can write down the mass of fluid leaving flow tube at end b per unit time is d a 2 times d s 2 uh, times rho 2, which is nothing but the mass, because d a 2 is the infinite small volume element, d s 2 is the infinite small length traverse in time d t. So, d a 2 time d s 2 will give you the volume times rho 2 will give you the mass. This mass flow occurs in time d t. So, mass flow per unit time is by d t. So, which you can write down in terms of velocity is d a 2 times v 2, v 2 is nothing but the velocity at the section b, because d s 2 by d t is nothing but the v 2 times rho 2. So, total now let me calculate in total mass uh, mass of fluid entering the whole section A. So, the mass of the fluid entering the whole section A per second that is mass of flow at A, you just integrate it over d A 1. So, what you will get 0 to A 1 d A 1 v 1 times rho 1. So, if you will integrate 0 to A 1 d A 1, you will get A 1. So, result is A 1 times v 1 times rho 1. Similarly, you can calculate mass of fluid leaving the whole section B per second that is mass rate of flow at B. Again, you integrate over d A 2, what you will get 0 to A 2 d A 2 v 2 times rho 2. Integration over A 2 uh, will gives you d A 2 gives you the A 2, because v 2 and rho 2 will not depend on A 2. So, the result is A 2 times v 2 times rho 2. So, this is the mass of fluid uh, mass flow at A, which is A 1 V 1 into rho 1. And similarly, mass flow at ma mass rate of flow at B is A 2 V 2 times rho 2. Okay. Since, the fluid is incompressible, so velocity will not change from A to B. So, rho 1 is the density of fluid entering at A, rho 2 is the uh, uh, density of fluid at B 2 at B. So, since the fluid is incompressible, so density will not change. So, rho 1 must be equal to rho 2. And since we have no source or sink in between sections A and B, so we have from the law of conservation of matter equal to A 1 V 1 equal to A 2 V 2 equal to let us say B because since rho 1 equal to rho 2, so it will cancel from left hand side and right hand side. So, conclusion is that rate of flow at A should is equal to rate of flow at B. This is called the equation of continuity and states that the quantity of fluid entering one end of the pipe per second is the same as leaving the pipe at the other end per second. Obviously, what is true of sections A and B is also true for all other sections of the pipe. So, it follows therefore, that the rate of flow of an incompressible and mobile fluid is the same throughout a pipe in the case of steady and streamlined flow. So, be careful, this is true only for a steady or streamlined flow. If the flow becomes turbulent, so, in that case this equation does not hold good. Further, it follows straight away from the above that V 1, if you will uh, take um, from the continuity equation V 1 A 1 equal to V 2 A 2, uh, uh, you will get it. The ratio of velocities at the 
two sections a and b, which is v 1 upon v 2 equal to a 2 upon a 1, which is inversely proportional to the area of cross section. So, the velocity of the fluid varies inversely as the cross section of the pipe. Suppose, in one end of the pipe, if the cross section is small, the velocity of the fluid passing through that cross section will be much larger compared to uh, the velocity of a bigger cross section. So, in the case of a gas, since the density change with pressure due to its high compressibility, it is not the volume, but the mass of the gas that remains constant through any section of the pipe. So, in that means, in the case of a gas, you cannot say rho 1 equal to rho 2. In that case, uh, rho cannot be cancelled from the right hand side to the left hand side. In that case, uh, main equations, main equations means um, a 1 v 1 rho 1 must be equal to a 2 v 2 rho 2. And we know a 1 v 1 into rho 1 is nothing but the mass at the section A and A 2 V 2 rho 2 is the mass of the fluid at section B. So, instead of A 1 V 1, the total equation should hold. So, that means, mass should remains the constant in both ends. Uh, so, let us see if rho, if rho 1 and rho 2 be the densities of the gas at the two sections A and B respectively. In that case, A 1 V 1 rho 1 equal to A 2 V 2 rho 2 or uh, a, a 1 and V 1 let us call capital V 1, which is the mass flow. So, V 1 times rho 1 equal to V 2 times rho 2. So, now let us see, uh, now let us calculate the energy of a liquid uh, in a flow when it is in motion. So, let us calculate what will be the energy of a liquid in a flow. Since a liquid has inertia, so it must possess kinetic energy when it is in motion. It also exert pressure on the walls of the containing vessel or the pipe and has therefore, pressure energy and may also have potential energy due to its position. So, we have thus three types of energy possessed by a liquid in a flow, namely the kinetic energy due to motion, the potential energy and the pressure energy. Let us calculate one by one. Let us calculate first kinetic energy. Clearly, the kinetic energy of a mass m of a liquid flowing with a velocity v is given by half m v square. If we consider unit volume of the liquid, in that case m equal to rho the density of the liquid and therefore, we have kinetic energy per unit volume of the liquid is half rho v square. Okay. So, and if you consider unit mass of the liquid means if you put m equal to 1, therefore, the kinetic energy per unit mass of the liquid will be simply half v square, because in that case rho will be 1. So, kinetic energy will be simply half v square. So, now let us calculate the potential energy. The potential energy of a liquid of mass m at a height h above the earth surface that is in its gravitational field is equal to m g h as you know already. And again if you will consider unit volume of the liquid in that case mass will be the rho the density of the liquid. Therefore, the potential energy per unit volume of the liquid will be simply rho g h, because of the unit volume mass will be replaced by the density of the liquid. But if you will consider unit mass of the liquid, so m equal to 1, in that case uh, potential energy per unit mass of the liquid will be simply g h, in that case rho will be replaced by 1. So, last calculate the pressure energy. Now, let consider a tank A, uh, see in the figure, uh, in figure 5, consider a tank A containing a liquid of density rho, provided with a narrow side tube T of cross sectional area small a, properly fitted with the piston P 
that can be smoothly moved in and out. Uh, okay. So, let the hydrostatic pressure due to the liquid at the level of the axis of the side tube be P, so that the pressure, so that the force on the piston is P times A, because force per unit area is nothing but the pressure, since the cross sectional area is A and pressure is P. So, the force on the piston is P times A. If therefore, more liquids is to be introduced into the tank, this much force has to be applied to the piston in moving it inwards. So, let the piston be moving slowly through a distance d x, so that the velocity of the liquid be very small and there may be no kinetic energy acquired by it. Then clearly a volume of liquid A times x, A is the cross sectional area or a mass A times x times rho, because rho is the density of the liquid of it is forced into the tank and an amount of work P times A times x is performed to do so, because P A is the force times x force into distance will give you the amount of work. So, this work which is P times A times x required to make the liquid move against pressure P without imparting any velocity to it, thus become the energy of the mass A times x times rho of the liquid in the tank, for it can do so the same amount of work in pushing the piston back when escaping from the tank. It is referred to as the pressure energy of the liquid. Thus, the pressure of a mass A times x times rho of the liquid is equal to P times A times x and therefore, pressure energy per unit mass of the liquid is P times A times x divided by the mass which is A times x times rho which is nothing but the P by rho that means, pressure by density. Now, if you will consider unit volume of the liquid we have pressure energy of the volume A x of the liquid is P times A times x and pressure energy per unit volume of the liquid is P times A times x by A into x which is simply P. So, the pressure of the liquid. The three types of energy as we have discussed kinetic energy, potential energy and pressure energy possessed by liquid in motion under in motion or under flow are mutually convertible one into another. So, now let us discuss this point one by one. Suppose, let us take consider a liquid of density rho contained in a vessel and let its depth be h. Okay. Then pressure due to the liquid column h at the bottom of the vessel will be p equal to h times rho times h g where g is the gravitational acceleration, acceleration due to gravity. So, if you take unit mass of the liquid from the bottom b to the surface a, clearly a unit mass. So, that means, clearly h times g unit of work has to be done against gravity, because you want to bring it from the bottom to the surface a. So, you have to work has to be done against gravity and therefore, the potential that work done against gravity will be stored into the liquid. So, therefore, the potential energy of the liquid increases by this amount or this much work is done by the by gravity if unit mass of the liquid comes down through a depth h. Hence, the potential energy of unit mass of the liquid is equal to h times g. And since pressure at a depth h is p equal to h times rho times g and pressure energy per unit mass of the fluid is pressure by density as we have already seen, we have pressure energy per unit mass of the liquid equal to h rho g by rho which is nothing but the h times g, which is nothing but the potential energy lost by the liquid in decreasing through distance h. 
thus conclude, we can conclude it that the pressure energy and potential energy are convertible one into other and therefore, they are sum for a liquid at rest is constant. Now, let us take other example to clarify uh, this statement. Again consider the flow of a liquid through a tube. Okay. Now, let us take a, a small cross sectional area A B. If the liquid has a constant velocity, there is no resultant force acting upon it. But if the flow is accelerated, there must be a pressure gradient along the tube of the flow. Let the change of a pressure for a distance d x be d p. So, let the pressure gradient be d p by d x, which may be taken to be constant over a short length of the tube. If the direction of flow be from A to B, the pressure decreases from A to B. If therefore, B, P be the pressure at the cross section B, so at A it will be greater than by delta x into d P by d x. If the small distance A to B is d x, that is the pressure at A will be P plus del x into d P by d x. So, the resultant force on the slice A B of the liquid will therefore, be A times del x into del p by del x, because uh, del x into del p by del x that is the excess pressure, force will be pressure into area. So, that is the reason A times del x into d p by d x, where A is the cross section of the tube. Let the velocity gradient along the tube of flow be d v by d x. In that case, if v be the velocity at A, the velocity at B will be v plus del x d v by d x, because the velocity increases in the direction A to B. So, therefore, increase in velocity through the distance del x will be del x into d v by d x. If the liquid covers this distance in time t, we have del t equal to del x upon v where v equal to del x by del t or in the limit v equal to d x by d t, d t tends to 0. So, now acceleration equal to rate of change of velocity and therefore, acceleration at the section a b equal to d v by d t and mass of the liquid in the section is a times del x into rho. So, that force on it is a into del x rho d v by d t, because uh, force equal to mass time acceleration. So, mass is A into del x into rho, this is the mass, acceleration is d v by d t. But force on this slice of the liquid is also equal to A uh, due to pressure gradient, which is A del x into del p by del x. So, these two things must equal. So, by equaling these two equations, A del x del p by del x, which is due to the pressure gradient, this force is due to the pressure gradient, minus sign is pressure decreases, which is equal to the mass time acceleration A del x rho d v by d t. The negative sign merely indicating the pressure and velocity gradient are opposite in sign, that is when the pressure decreases, the velocity increases along B. Okay. This is the meaning of the negative sign. So, from that equation, let us see, uh, from that equation, so if you, you can cancel A from both sides and del x you can cancel also from both sides. So, finally, you will get minus d p by d x equal to rho d v by d t. So, if you will decompose d v by d t, what you will get uh, rho d v upon d x into d x into d t. So, since d x into d t, d x by d t is v, so rho v d v by d x. So, final expression is minus d p by d x equal to rho v d v by d x. So, finally, you will get minus d p equal to rho v d v. If you will integrate both sides, so uh, and ranges from the p 1 to p 2 
to V 1 to V 2, if the pressure changes from P 1 to P 2, correspondingly accordingly the velocity changes from V 1 to V 2. So, we get P 1 by rho minus P 2 by rho, you assume that velocity are not changing equal to half V 2 square minus V 1 square. That is the pressure energy and kinetic energy are convertible one into other. Since the pressure energy is also convertible into potential energy, it follows that the three types of energy kinetic energy, potential energy and pressure energy, these are all mutually convertible to into each other. So, from this way we, uh, we got this argument from this simple example we understood that all three types of energy are mutually convertible into each other. So, now we are in a position to state one of the most remarkable theorem in fluid mechanics which is the Bernoulli's theorem. So, this theorem given by the Swiss engineer Daniel Bernoulli in the year 1738, which states that the total energy per unit mass of a liquid flowing from one point to another without any friction remains constant throughout the displacement. Essentially, a law of variation of pressure along a streamline, it is an easy deduction from the principle of conservation of energy or other way around Bernoulli's theorem is nothing but a conservation of energy uh, in other form in the case of a fluid. For as we have seen the pressure and potential energy of a liquid are convertible into the other, so are the pressure and kinetic energy. It follows therefore, that in any streamline flow of liquid, any streamline flow of liquid, be careful this statement, the loss of energy in one form is equal to the gain of energy in other or that the sum total of its energy namely potential energy plus pressure energy plus kinetic energy will remain constant. Uh, in mathematical form H g plus p upon rho plus half v square that means potential energy plus pressure energy plus kinetic energy will be constant let us constant c. So, p is the static pressure half if you will multiply by rho. So, you will get it is more clearly p plus half rho v square plus h rho g equal to constant. In that case uh, it looks more elegant. So, half rho v square is the dynamic pressure, rho is the density of fluid, v is the velocity of the fluid flow, h is the height above the reference surface. This quantity is constant for all points along the streamline. So, this is the Bernoulli's theorem. 